welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Shepno shall welcome back your presence. I have been quite absent for a long time, and now I'm back with you to give you sickness. Yes, it's another visual novel, but this time I am going to be very careful and try not to screw up like last time, which is a total fail. Until I have to delete all of them. Well, what has been happened? Let it happen. Now I'm back and what interests me in this game is it looks very good as most visual novel these days are about hey what about if we made a story and then add some boobs in it I'm pretty sure it will do great things well yes it does great things but it's not actually that good in the story except for Sakura which I don't say that I play it no I don't nope so anyway I'm just gonna show you sickness it looks very good and let's begin bear with me it's full of tragic despair and many things that you don't want to actually see murder one of the most heinous crimes a person can commit the act of taking another human being's life the act of robbing a person of their already limited time on this planet. It is a fear inducing crime which anybody can commit. Every housewife, every student, every police officer is a potential killer. Oh my god, that is actually kind of dark. It's a crime that doesn't discriminate by blood or circumstance. It is a crime which can be committed by and make victims. Of just about anyone. Everybody remains both a potential killer and victim, blissfully ignorant of the fact of the fact, sorry, that they could be next, assuring themselves that it could never happen to them. What are you talking about? It can always happen to them. Oh my God! What in the world is that? And so, as a result of them, naivete, is that how you say it? Naivete? Naivety? Those very people never see it coming. Though the scene before me may seem horrific in this case, as with so many others, there was no great story behind it. There was no build-up, no resentment between the victim and myself, no mutual hatred that gave us reason to fight. We didn't spend years at each other's throats. Well, if you do, it's actually kind of awkward. We had never fought before, and neither one of us saw this coming. Ooh. In reality, this is the result of a simple, common scenario. One we have all heard of before. Penny-pinching employer, a bankrupt employee, and a denied paycheck. What? Is that why you murder your boss? Truly. There was nothing special about this encounter. My boss didn't taunt me or attempt to exacerbate the situation. What the hell is that? I need to search Google Translate for that. He didn't fire me, insult me, or do anything to tempt fate. If anything, I'm the one who made things worse. Rather than try to reason with him, I lashed out, beating the pompous man in front of me to a bloody pulp. I know it wouldn't accomplish anything. I know attacking him wouldn't get me the money I needed, and yet I... I... What? Needed to punish him? Oh, I like this already. That's right. As self-righteous as it sounds, I couldn't let him get away with what he did. The money that greedy bastard owed me, a pittance to him, was everything to me. I'm sorry. I would have fed my sister and I secured our lease for another month, perhaps even granted us a brief respite from the hell we're currently living. It was a shining beacon in our otherwise miserable lives, a way to ensure our survival during such a trying stressful time. What is time is this by the way? Is this like my time or what? But because of that narcissist whim, all hope I had of revering my... Sorry. My drink is trying to came out. I had of repairing my broken life. Vanish. You will deny me shelter, food, 
comfort. And for what? New seats for his car, a fancy watch, a new TV, a new teddy bear for me to hop to. Sorry. And so, staring this injustice in the face, hearing firsthand how little my life meant to him. So I, oh sorry. I snapped. Rare, of course, as fitting as it may seem. To re reciprocate his indif indifference. Oh my god, they have so hard, many hard words, I'm sorry. To my life by taking his. Doing so was never my intention. True, I wanted to kill him. I wanted to make him suffer for belittling my life. For denying me even a moment of peace. But I realized then, as I can clearly see now, that lashing out wouldn't solve anything. So why did I do it? Why would I resort to this? Why would I deliberately choose this no-win situation? If I were to commit a criminal act, why resort to violence rather than theft? Yeah, why, you, why do you do that? If this were truly about my wages, why seek revenge rather than alternative, alternative means of compensation? Yes, why? Unfortunately, there is only one answer I can give in which I am confident. Oh, what is that? Could it be? You're losing your mind. Yes. Yes. My precious. What? No, it's not. It isn't the first explanation that came to mind. But it does make sense. A few hours ago, I would have laughed at the cliché of a criminal blaming the voices in their head. Even more so at the notion that a person would act on the silent words of an unseen entity. However, as evidenced by the corpse at my feet, those words aren't so easy to ignore. As I attempted to survive in this two-class society, willfully believing that I was somehow immune to the corruption and classism plaguing this town, there was always a voice whispering to me, telling me not to believe the good fortune around me. Oh no, am I starting to lose my mind as well? I'm actually doing that. A voice filled with skepticism and doubt, preempting the inevitable, telling me to take action before it was too late. But you didn't listen. That was my first mistake. Does that mean you will make another mistake? You didn't say that's their last mistake. That's not good. I ignored the benevolent advice offered to me. The predictions now shown to be accurate. The good faith I have received from someone asking for nothing in return. When he told me to stay in school and live with a guardian. When he told me to seek work elsewhere. When he told me to look for a home somewhere safer. I didn't listen. Every step of the way I fought against the sound, logical advice it offered. If anything, I made a point of doing the opposite of the what the voice told me to do. Well, that's... Um, yeah, you're losing your mind. Or at least... Until you heard what you wanted to hear. And that was my second mistake. Are we gonna have the third, and then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seven, eight, nine, and ten? It wasn't that I refused to hear the voice's advice. I simply wasn't interested in taking the safe, responsible route. So you're like those badass guy who actually loses their mind and goes crazy. So by the time that violence had become the advice course of action, might as well go with it, is that it? My path had already been determined. It's kind of weird to hear that from someone like this guy, <laughs> which most heroes said that my path had already been determined. But this is not exactly inspiring. Well, finally. You know, I'm running out of breath. We talk a lot. Capture one. A new life. Is this where I work? Looks shitty though. Monday evening, September 5th. Hey, four more days, my birthday. Nice. Don't kill during my birthday, however. Less than half an hour ago in this very room, I committed a serious crime. Beating a gentleman. A very violent crime. The kind of crime were for which people go to prison without any hope of ever leaving. I lost control of myself, attacked my boss, and without a doubt ended my short time working in this place. I acted on impulse as I stared in the face an injustice that threatened to take away my home, 
allowing myself to do the only thing I could to avoid feeling powerless. But as the adrenaline wore off and the tension cooled, I soon realized my mistake. I saw clearly the fresh corpse at my uh, the fresh corpse at my feet, the stained carpet beneath it, and the bloody hands responsible for everything before me. And so I stared at my own handiwork, accepted the gravity of the situation before me, and took immediate steps towards regaining control once more. Is this me, Marcus? You know, when you come here, I figure you needed my help with something not strictly legal. But this? Swo, my man, you have outdone yourself. You really do have a bright future ahead of you. Well, thank you, Marcus. So, Swo is my name. Swo? How do you call him? Let's, I'll call him Swo. Swo. Yeah, Swo. Unfortunately, given my dire situation, my options were quite limited. So, that's why I called this guy. Staring an imminent prison sentence in the face, I called upon Marcus, a co-worker of mine. Very nice co-worker, actually. Contrary to his crappy die job and lean figure, Marcus is a man of many trades, several of which are entirely illegal. Oh. Since the moment I began working here, Marcus has been open about his criminal dealings. More than once hinting that he could help me or vice versa. Now that things have come to this, it's time for him to make good on that promise. Oi oi, less talking, more lifting. Who are you? I'm here to help you two out, not take care of everything myself. Second Marcus saw our boss in his current state, he understood the situation. Without asking a single question, he promised to help me out of my predic predicament. Thereafter, calling a man whom I never met before, and I will met him so many times. I mean, look at his face. It's like jo Joel from The Last of Us. And sure enough, upon seeing our boss's corpse, the stranger smiled to himself and grabbed Mr. Mudo's legs, dragging his body into the doorway before requesting assistance. He's gonna be like, yes, finally. That stupid boss of mine, he gets what he deserves. I'm sorry, I just really love being a villain, you know, sometimes. Don't be like that. Surely a big strong man like you can leave that weedy piece of shit by yourself. And got this poor sap's blood all over me in the process. Either give me a hand or do this yourself. Marcus and his acquaintance carried my boss's corpse into the stranger's van which was parked just outside of Mudo's office. How do we destroy the evidence? Burn them? No? Thanks to the proximity of my boss's office, nobody heard our scuffle over the machinery used within the warehouse, and Marcus' acquaintance was able to block visibility and access to the office with his facile. Are they doing this in the middle of work? I mean, look at the clock. It's... Um, 10 past 30? Unless it's night time, well, I don't know. Even so, despite knowing how fortunate my circumstances were, I couldn't help but feel anxious. Yeah, I know how that feels. That doesn't mean I killed someone, no, no, no. Whether these two successfully cover up Udo's death or not, there's no way this can end well. All it will take is one witness or a slip of the tongue and I could wind up in prison. Well, you know what to do, Swo. When there's a witness, all you need to do is just... My precious. What? And even if I do get away with this, what then? Will I be indebted to Marcus forever? Will he ask for something extreme in return for his silence, like next time killing his boss? No? No matter what scenario I envision, it doesn't bode well for me. Then... Stop following your mind. Phew, that bastard's heavier than he looks. Tell me about it. I thought my corpse handling days were long over. Is corpse handling days? Oh, you're interested in that? I love how the icon is a knife. This guy, this guy sounds like the right person for the job, but just who is he? He's Joel from The Last of Us. He kills zombies. Anyway, I'll handle the disposal. You two clean up in here, alright? 
You're the boss, Andre. Just leave the rest to us. Nice name, Andre. After all, that'll give us time to talk about repayment. Marcus, you damn son of a... And there it is. Yep, you need something to repay this silent crime. It's not unreasonable for Marcus to expect something in return. I called on him knowing full well that I need to repay the favor. Even so, just thinking about how he'd expect me to repay something like this. What do you have in mind exactly? Finally, I see my face. Why would they not show my face all this time? I mean, what's the difference? Oh, nothing big, at least. Not for someone like you. How dare you talk back, uh, talk that uh, kind of way to me? Don't you know me? I'm swole. I just killed a boss. But really, before we get into that, I've gotta tell you. I picked you as a fighter from the moment we met. But to actually kill somebody? I seriously underestimated you. Oh ho ho! Marcus makes it sound like I plan on killing Mudo from the start. But I'm no killer. Even if I've been in my fair share of fights, I've never tried to kill someone before. With that in mind, I have the perfect job for you. I'm sure he does. I like this. But given the events leading up to this moment, I have to ask. Is it a legal job? Oh duh, yes of course it is. I mean, the assassin business in back in the 80s, yeah. Why you go silent, Marcus? What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? <sighs> sure, why not? As long as you don't get caught, of course. Figures. Oh, cheer up, I'm just messing with ya. I got the perfect job in mind for you. You'll be able to rake in the, the dough, the mmm. -hmm. Feed that aggression of yours and pay off your debt almost immediately. Interested? Hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. You're offering to pay me while I repay you. That sounds cliche, as if you're gonna make me in another debt. Is that it? Of course. Considering the reason why we're here, I thought it would be better not to get between you and your money. Well, it's not exactly wrong. I mean, Suo said like, his life is a hell with his, or whatever, sister. Okay, oh my god, I've been talking so much. My breath feels so short. Whatever the case, what kind of job are we talking about? I brought you here to get me out of trouble. There won't be any point if you just drag me in deeper. <sighs> you really don't have any faith in me, do you? Well, so be it. Just keep in mind that you're worth more to me alive well than in prison. He sounds like those kind of guys that like, first time he became your friend and then after a few while it became revealed that he was, the, he was behind everything. But, I don't know, sounds like a cliche thing. That is a fair point. Not that you have a choice anyway. Ah, of course. Ah, that, that line. Not that you have a choice. Of course. My god. If you want all of this keep kept secret, then you're gonna do exactly as I say. Do you want me to, uh, you know, do it tonight or no? I'm sorry. Ooh, we're changing skins. Well, 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 look at that beautiful mansion. That looks super rich. Oh wait, <laughs> the name, Richmond, yeah! A town riddled with crime and corruption. From the name, I think I can actually guess it. Richmond is a vast town, a collection of smaller districts, each varying significantly in terms of wealth, ethnicity, and population de density. Large enough to entrap millions of everyday citizens, yet dense enough to suffocate any who dare reside with him. It's a complicated town, misunderstood even by those living within its walls. But beyond the size and scope of this town, there is one aspect which stands out above all others. Its concentration of wealth, 
Well, from the name Rich and Diamonds, which is Richmond. This is a town where the wealthy flock together, creating their own small utopia. They build up selective parts of the city, sculpt the law to their liking, and generally get away with whatever their bank balance will allow. You know what that's called in real life? The power of money. Yep. Oh wait, now I can see the chapter 1, Monday, September 5th. Yay. The end result has been the creation of a state-sized town comprised of countless districts varying from wealthy suburbs filled with hospitals and schools to those lacking even phone lines. Put simply, this is a two-class society, heavily favoring the rich. Yep, of course. As someone living in a wealthy suburb while working among the poor, I'm, far more, I'm fairly familiar with both sides of the city. Do you see the one on the... Uh, uh, nothing. Okay, never mind. Thanks to those who cling to every cent, labor can be commissioned for next to nothing. Making Richmond a surprisingly cheap place to live. Public transport is constant, resources are plentiful, infrastructure is abundant, and the town keeps growing. For those with the money to support themselves, this isn't a bad place to live. On the other hand, with so much competition for work, most residents have no choice but to accept whatever work they can and to slave away for as little as necessary. It's actually kind of dark, as the game does. Slave wages are standard practice, workplace safety laws don't apply, and it's every man for himself. For, every, for anyone without a white collar job, this town is hell. And with mere weeks left on our lease, it won't be long before my sister and I experience that hell for ourselves. I feel like I'm reading an amazing story. Of course, looking back over our lives until this point, I can't really complain. Before our parents passed away, Sarah and I lived sheltered, easy lives, never worrying for a second about housework or finances. We lived good lives in a safe neighborhood. We attended an etiquette school, ate healthily, and were never far away from medical help. So now, even with all of that being stripped away, we're still better off than most others in our situation. Or at least, we would be. This is so dark, oh my god. If I hadn't just single-handedly destroyed our new lives. Where what excuse I give, or whether I play my boss's penny-pinching, the foreign anger I felt surging through my body, or merely my desperate need for cash, it doesn't change the fact that I killed a man. Even so, I don't feel guilty. Really? Wow. Wow, he is bored for this. Assassin. I barely even regret the loss of life. If anything, it was the most fun I had in months. Holy shit, this is really <laughs> this is really fucked up. But well, that's the point of the story. A single moment of pure bliss taking me away from the harsh reali reality of my new life. Rather, what's eating away at me now is the imminent aftermath. Thanks to my selfish act of revenge. And self-indulgence, I now have to explain to my only family why. After a mere two weeks in this house, we'll be forced to move again. Without a stable source of income, we won't be able to live here much longer, and I refuse to allow my sister to be subjected, uh, subjected to the discrimination and crime that makes this city so unlivable for the poor. But with only my only chance of recovery resting in the hands of a friend who essentially blackmailed me into meeting with him tonight, I have no illusions of how this will go. Nice music by the way on the background, that amazing trombone. Yep. So if my choices are to give Sarah fair warning before our lease expires, or to place my faith in a criminal whom I known for a mere two weeks, then 
Then what? Well, can I even call that a choice? I just love saying that, those kind of things when it's all silent. Well, look at this! Happy, happy little house. It's not as bad as you'd think. Soon as I entered my temporary home, I noticed a pleasant scent of sand coming from the kitchen. Following my nose. I'm sorry. I traced the source of the scent back to the chef of the household, who immediately ran over to my side. Ah, welcome back. Well, your family really has a unique hair, I have to say. Is it what you call silver? Platinum? I think it's platinum. Maybe. Very nice. Ah, oh, welcome back. I thought it was about time for you to get home. I've been waiting all afternoon. The young girl waiting for me was Sarah, my twin sister. Oh, a twin? Well, as we all know, twins will usually have the same perspective or the same kind of ways they act, so I think we all know where this is going. <laughs> I'm sorry, the only family I have left. Unlike me, Sarah is still in school. So she's been getting home uh, uh, a few hours earlier than I have lately, giving her ample time to take care of the household chores. Kind, gentle, dependable, smart, Sarah is the image of an ideal little sister. One without whom I'd have never made it this far. I'm not that late, am I? Not at all. In fact, you're just in time. In time? In time for what? Even my first observation upon entering the house, I already had a good idea what awaited me. However, even with Sarah standing before me while wearing an apron, something didn't seem right. Oh, what is that? In a house with few appliances and shelves stocked with cheap instant food, my sister, who had never cooked for me before, had somehow whipped up a proper meal in anticipation of my return. Ah, so your your crime friends is actually helping you now? I could ignore the fact that this house smells like real food for once, but where on earth the ingredients and utensils come from? Since Sarah and I began living on our own, we've been in eating instant food every day, unable to afford anything better. With the petty cash we had left, there's no way Sarah could have bought any of this. In the saucepan, we have white sauce with chunks of sun-dried tomatoes, and in the pot, we have fettuccine pasta. I hope you're hungry. Hey, I like pasta, man. It's making me hungry, too. Hungry is an understatement, but if there's one thing more powerful than my stomach, it's my curiosity. Sarah, have you been stealing? No, I'm sorry. Don't say that. That's not nice. Sarah? Where did you get the money for all of this? And since when have you known how to cook? I go, out, I go out of my way to cook your dinner, and this is how you react? Well, she's her, when she's angry, she's cute anyway. Fine then. I guess I'll just have to eat it all myself. <sighs> I knew I should have stopped after the first question. Oh well, forget it. Sarah probably just borrowed some things from the school or from one of her friends. Anyway, where have you been? Usually you had been home an hour ago. Shit, that's right. <laughs> Give it the situation. I had even thought about what time it was. What time is it? Is it worth trying to come up with a, an excuse now? Oh shit. Um. Uh. Okay. So. Before I actually make a choice. I will try to feel like I am Swo. What will I do in his situation? Well, for me, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm usually gonna dismiss the question actually. It's like trying to alter the, with the topic of the thing with trying to do something. So I'm gonna do with that. Nah, better just to just play it off. An excuse made up on the spot would just make her suspicious. Yeah. I mean, it's a psychology, psychological thing. Just at work. I must have lost track of time. Anyway, did I miss anything? Ah, now that you mention it, something did arrive for you. See, it works. 
I'm a genius. Sarah removed her apron, simultaneously taking out an envelope from her pocket. Sorry, I know I should have opened it. Oh no! No! I think she knows. Sarah handed me the envelope, which she had attempted to reseal after the opening. It's not gonna work, Sarah. I am your greatest brother that I know what's gonna happen inside. I peered inside the envelope, and within it, I found... Money? Why did the music stop? What is happening? Money? Wait a minute. There has to be at least $2,000 in here. I spent a little on utensils and some fresh meat and vegetables. You can't eat instant noodles every day, you know. Sarah? This is... Very... Um, you know? Yeah, Alright. Sarah explained to me why the envelope was no longer full. But as I vacantly stared at the money in my hands, she didn't have bothered. Even at the pay I was promised, I should have made less than $1,000 in total. For it to be over double that left after Sarah's expenses. Marcus! Oh no, he set me up. Yeah, he definitely set me up. This must be Marcus's doing. He knows I need money. And that I won't be able to pay him back unless I accept his job offer. Furthermore, Marcus sent the money straight to my sister. Eliminating the possibility of me refusing or returning the money. Well, just as I say, a smart guy that plans everything. Marcus! Damn you. But anyway, thanks for the money. But how did he get the money to my sister so early? Did he know ahead of time that Mudo would refuse to pay me? This is all just... What are you waiting for? Come on, get it while it's hot. Interrupting my agitated thoughts, Sarah took me by the hand and led me into the living room. I have to say, not a complex, a very simple design, but I like it. This is the kind of living room I would like to have. It's very simple. Not over classy or anything. This is very nice. Calm and comfy, you know. See on the table in front of the couch were placemats paired with shiny cutlery, more goods we didn't own mere hours ago. Further to that, two steaming plates entered my vision moments later as Sarah made another quick stop in the kitchen, bringing with her a heavenly scent. Come on, put down the money and eat. As intrigued as I was by the scene before me, the thought of putting down the cash-filled envelope had yet to cross my mind. After all, before I could relax and eat dinner, there was still something I needed to clear up. I will, but before that... How and when did you get this envelope? Didn't your boss tell you? The envelope was mailed here sometime today. Well, I get that envelopes are made to be mailed. But an envelope with this much money in it? That's just careless. And extremely suspicious. Hmm, I hadn't really thought about that. Sarah, you're supposed to be my twin. We should have the same, you know, thing. I just found it slip under the door before I got home. That isn't much to go on, but it does confirm my earlier suspicions. Marcus? Sarah gets home, home hours before I do. If this money came from Marcus, he really must have known what would happen ahead of time. Damn it. Feels like I'm being played by that bastard. You should have already known this, Swo. I have been telling you, he is the kind of guy that will plan things ahead and try to make us being stuck with no option. And anyways, guys, uh, beside that, oh my god, it has been a lot of talk. Holy shit. I feel like I read an entire book or something. Like 10 pages. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Be sure to tell your friends about my channel. Thank you for listening. Not actually much gameplay as you just listen to when I talk and uh, make one choices. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you. Please be sure to like to subscribe, like and share the videos. And well, Sepnosia, 
Thank you for your presence.